Hello everyone, I'm Zelda Kelly and this is episode 23 and we are here together seeing crime. I want to welcome you and bring you all in because this is a very interesting tarot deep dive that we're going to do. Now there is a key witness. There, this key witness you all know, but he's not a relative. I know y'all are saying, oh, no, I know who he is. You probably do. But I have a little something to share with you, and I think this is so extremely important. But before we get started, I have here the Hand of Fate with the Hidden Bicycle Deck, the Vintage Tarot, and of course our friend, the Kipper. I also have a bottle of water because I think this is going to get a little on the hairy side. <laughs> So, as we go forward, I want to say first and foremost, the disclaimer of what I'm going to be saying is my opinion. I don't claim to be a federal officer, a law enforcement officer, a lawyer, a doctor. I am a card reader, and the cards tell me the story, and that's what I believe is truth. And that's it. So you are here. We're going to tell the story together. We're going to talk about it. And you can make up your own mind. And I'm going to tell you, I love your comments. I try to answer every one of you. So if you have something that you want to tell me or comment to me about, please feel free to do so. Because we're all friends here. And if you have a different opinion... By all means, let's talk about it. Okay, so let's get started. In this episode, I'm going to lay out a foundation. But I want you to know this, okay? I, I want you to know that I believe it was long around day 17 now, You'll correct me if I'm wrong, and that's okay. There was a man who testified. He's not family. He doesn't really hang around this group. And he's not a beer drinker. Now y'all know who I'm talking about. The key witness in this Karen Tree... I'm sorry, Karen Reed trial, in my opinion is Brian Higgins. Now, give me a second. Give me a second. Let's just, let me explain. The reason that I'm saying that, first and foremost, is because Brian Higgins, he is a federal ATF officer. He has a lot of training. Remember that? Training. And he was being very flirtatious with Karen he was at the party, and he also has a federal proffer. Now, what is a federal proffer? Well, a federal proffer, and you can look it up, it's my understanding that it is an agreement, a written agreement, not oral, but a written agreement between either a defendant or someone who is under a criminal investigation. You heard that right. And so since he is under a criminal investigation, he and his lawyer arranged for the federal government to give him a proffer. And that keeps him from not being charged with any crime or being held responsible for that if he tells the truth. Now, the other thing about a proffer, is my understanding, it's what you get if eventually you want to make a plea deal. Ah. Now, why would someone receive a proffer? It's because you know something. You know some really, pardon the professional French, some very damning evidence, extremely. 
they will come to you first. And I believe they probably saw some things on his phone. But here's what else that I have done a little research and I have read about and heard about. Now, I don't know if this is true, and I do not like to spread gossip, but you guys tell me if you've heard this, because this makes him a key witness into this trial. And I know I hear the questions already, and we're going to address that. But here's what makes him the key witness. The fact that after this was done, first of all, I got to tell you this. Brian Higgins is a runner. He runs. He runs from the truth. And if you saw him, I know you did, there, there was a small part, maybe this small, that felt kind of sorry for him during his testimony because, truthfully, I really think that he did like Karen. I really do think that he was interested in Karen and thought that Karen was interested in him. And you know what? Those things happen. She and John were having problems and there were some flirtatious texts going on. He said on the stand that he doesn't have family. He doesn't have anyone. And that's what he wants. And it almost looked as though he was going to tear up. Did anybody else see that? Let me know if you did. So, he goes to the waterfall. They're ruffling and tussling and, you know, playing a little, you know, battly, battly here and there. And it looked like on the tape that they were like tugging him along. He didn't really want to go to the party. And I know now he regrets that and will regret it every day of his life. I think he is suspended but I am not sure, okay? But I do know that he is being investigated or he would not have gotten a proffer. You just don't walk in and say, hey, I want a proffer. You get that when you know something. So what did I hear? I heard that after what happened on January 29th of 2022, a few days later, he went into a bar and saw some of his Boston PD friends and started telling them the story of what happened in the basement. Now, that's, that's the story. That's what I hear. His story was that they were got into a tussle. They started beating up on John. And Chloe attacks. Now, there's something I'm going to tell you about ATF agents that I know. And I don't know why it is for this part of the federal agencies, but they don't put up with aggressive dogs. And they, they will eliminate that risk immediately. Now, I'm just going to say that because I'm an animal lover and we're not going to get into that. But those agents have been trained to do that sort of thing. And they have been trained with aggressive dogs. So his story was, he was in the basement. He was watching all this unfold. You hear my cat. He is confirming all this. He's watching everything unfold. And lo and behold... Things get rough, and they're punching him. And Chloe starts attacking John, supposedly, allegedly. Higgins tries to pull Chloe off of John. And when he does that, Chloe came after John. And at that moment, John ran out. He did not see them do anything more. However, he did see, so he said, supposedly, allegedly. Now, in this bar, when he was talking to his Boston PD friends, they told him, whoa, Higgins, we don't want to hear this stuff. 
What the heck is wrong with you? We don't want to hear this. Higgins put his drink down on the bar and ran out. He's a runner. He's going to run from this. Why? Because he saw what happened. Now, why else would someone get a proffer? Now, just indulge me here for a second. When you know that you don't belong in the group, you see, it wasn't only Karen that didn't belong. It was Higgins that did not belong in the group either. And they invited him to come along. Now, someone told me that Brian Albert looked a little scuffed up after this party. I don't know if that's true. Someone, please tell me. Someone tell me. So that's my understanding. But why would he get a proffer? Well, if he sees that there's going to have to be a plea deal. Now, I know what you're going to say, but Zelda, he could have said this in that trial. No, he could not have. They were not allowed to bring up a lot of things under the federal investigation. But I can bet your bottom dollar if they get a chance to during this second trial that I don't think is going to happen in January. Pardon Bilbo. Yes, I have a cat by the name of Bilbo Baggins. Uh, he has a new flea collar on tonight and he's not happy. All right, so he knows he's not family. He knows he would be thrown under the bus. He knows that he's got to be scared. Why do you think that there was a lawyer came in during the last part of Higgins' testimony and stood there beside him because there were some questions that he, that, that started to get a little hairy. And Higgins has to tell the truth on the stand or that proffer becomes null and void. Now that's my understanding. I'm not a lawyer. Okay. But he's a runner. So he puts the drink down on the bar. Didn't even pay for it. He rushes out of there like there's no tomorrow. During this altercation at 34 Fairview Road, he tries to pull off Chloe, supposedly, and she starts attacking him and he runs out. Why couldn't he have called somebody? If that were really true, why didn't he call somebody? Or... Was it because there were too many people that know the McAlberts and he wouldn't have got very far with that info? I can see that happening. So let's ask the questions, okay? Because with this, that means John did go in the house. Now, Higgins said he remembers seeing a tall fellow that was dark hair walk in. And that, to me, is a hint that that was John. But that is the key with... Look what card fell over, my darlings. The imprisonment card. This is exactly why Higgins took the proffer. Because he knew that he knew too much. Sometimes you know that you know that you know enough to know that you either don't know enough or you do know enough that's going to lead you down one path or another. And that's the path that he may be headed to. Now, Higgins may get a plea deal when it's all said and done if he turns federal evidence against these pe people, which I believe he already has. We're not hearing too much about Brian Higgy, baby, are we? Everybody else we're hearing about. Higgins, we're not really hearing about. Let's lay more foundation. So that is the scary part. And my darlings, I am recording this on the evening of the 29th of July. Here we go with the foundation. Expectation, yeah. He's expecting that there's going to be some type of plea deal. The community, we're getting one more card. 
and a high honor. Well, this won't be such a high honor. This means that your labor is very hard. It means that he he the highest honor he could probably get would be a plea deal. Let me tell you that. The community is so upset over this thing. It's so pathetic. But yes, he is expecting to end up taking a plea deal. Now, I'm going to say this. I could very much be wrong. I'm not the TikTok psychic that's going to sit here and say, oh, yes, this, yes, yes. But it sure does point to everything, doesn't it? It sure does. Let's take these cards. This is the tarot. And we're going to ask spirits, guides, angels, and Bilbo. Honey. <laughs> you know, sometimes I think I don't have toddlers around anymore. That's been a long time ago. But I have kitties. Sometimes the same thing. <gasps> There's Jennifer. Did you hear me gasp? <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I am, I am always surprised at what the cards tell me. Yes. Okay. I'm going to explain these. Give me a second. Give me a second. Okay. We see Jennifer. This 10 of cups means that you've come to the end of the line. That it's a celebration because it will be over. And you played the part because, look, you're celebrating with others. And then you move on. The tens in the tarot mean you've completed that part of the chapter. You've learned the lessons. You've accepted all the blessings or the not-so-good things. And you're taking that into the next chapter. And that's what this is here. That's what I'm seeing with this proffer. Now, you see this page of wands, once again, lighting a fire under someone, metaphorically speaking. Getting them to open up the door for opportunity. Look how he's looking up there. Opportunity and growth. I'm going to tell you something about Higgins. His career is pretty much over with. And so as his, so is his life, life as he knows it. I don't feel bad for him because he made some mistakes, judgment call mistakes. And I can't judge him because who knows, I may have done the same thing. But when you see law enforcement officers allegedly, supposedly doing something that was in the basement, you're going to be in shock. He had to open that door so he didn't land where the other ones are going to go, including Little Miss, Little Miss, can't do wrong, right? This particular card, I like this one. There are some things about this card that I'm going to share with you, and I apologize. Here we go again, long video, but we're going to look into this. I want to deep dive into this. You see, these people are coming to this fellow right here. He's standing on this bench. I don't know if you can see it or not. He is holding a Mason's Mall in his hand. Now, what is a Mason's Mall? You see how the brick is laid through here? A Mason's Mall is something that was used or is still used to tap brick, block, cement, blocks, whatever, into place so they are level. That's building a foundation. But there's something else I want to say. I know that many of you have seen either in Europe or pictures or maybe even experienced maybe some in cathedrals or other places that have filigree in their churches and near like where they have breezeways and so forth. The reason they do that is because these are open spaces. And when the wind blows through, it causes a certain tone or vibration 
or a frequency. Even back then in the 14, 15, 1600s, they knew how important that was. So what does this card mean? It means coming together and getting advice from someone who can keep things steady, who can put things into place and make sure a foundation is laid. So that would be his law team, his lawyer, who I've heard is a pretty good lawyer. He's, he's pretty up there. But it's not about him, that lawyer. So Higgins got lawyered up. Why would you get lawyered up if you didn't do anything? All of them are lawyered up. I guess you would at this point. Let's talk about the hidden deck. So let's see. And I would love this if all of you tell me that you think that this is on track or you don't think this is on track. Because in my honest opinion, my opinion only, without accusing, I'm pretty sure that Chloe had a big part in this. How that all shook out and came down, I don't know. I, we may not ever know. All right, here we go. Not so good cards right now. Karen. We're going to lay out another row of these. And then I have another... Oh, boy, that's not a good card. Yes, Bilbo, darling. So, guess who this is? Prince Albert and King Albert, the prince. You know who he is. So he has known information, and it, this card here tells this. These three cards tell the story. Now, this is Karen. This is a, a card that indicates that's who she is, and that is, I am so sorry, Bilbo. Angel, stop, honey. Sorry, everyone. Okay, so this confirms that that's her because this is a money card and it's an earning card. So she's the one, and I know that that's why this one right here was jealous because this one right here, I still think, had a thing for John. I still think. And John knew it. This is telling us that she was successful to a certain degree, but now this has definitely been a wrench in the gear. This is BA and this is CA, but this card here is and can be equivalent to this card here. This means if you're doing yes and no only, this is the no card. If you're looking for a card that says you're going to go to prison, or you're going to go to jail, or you're going to be locked up, or you are a victim of your own thoughts, or you are going through a very hard time, this is the card. And I know Higgins is going through that too. One more deck, my friends. What lies beneath? So we're going to get some more hints here of what lies beneath. And then I'll do a really quick summary. Envy. Oh, yes, my darlings. This one, this one, and this one, and Karen. Envy. And I think there were some that even envied Brian Higgins. Hater. Wow. Got some lovely cards coming out here, don't we? Don't want to hear it. That's Higgins. He's the runner. And yes, he is setting the record straight. He will be. You may not hear about this. Bugaboo. Yeah, the bugaboo. What is the bugaboo? Well, the bugaboo is all the little, the little gossip 
everything that is coming about, all the little gossip. This is pretty interesting, isn't it? There's a lot of negative emotion around this group, isn't there? Just right in here, I'm going to grab this card. So here's my, here's my synopsis of all this, my darlings. If this is true about Higgins witnessing, he is a key witness. They're going to make sure that he is protected, that his testimony is protected until there comes a day. I'm going to say, I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I'm going to say, if that is the truth, he will have a plea deal because he's going to help. And I think, listen, there's an ongoing investigation in which Higgins, I'm sure, was criminally or had a criminal investigation because there were some pretty not so good things that were on his phone. And I think that's why he went to see his FBI friend, his Fed friend, to help him pull some of that or extract some of those things off. The defense knew. The defense knows. The defense will try to bring this up. And I'm going to tell you, I have no clue why the CW would want to continue with this case, except there's a lot more behind it. There's There were a lot of people coming together, interlocking, and believe me, one trips and they all fall. And that is Higgins. I'm also going to predict this. I believe that we will start hearing of indictments and of arrests closer into October. I think there's going to be uh, this hearing August 9th, and I've got a special uh, reading that I want to bring out for you <clears throat> regarding that. But that's going to come out, and it's going to be depending upon the results of that. But the feds are not looking at Karen Reed. The feds are actually assisting the defense. But they have been, they have been squashed in bringing a lot of this information forward. Karen knows who did this. So does Alan Jackson and David Giannetti. I'm not going to say because I don't know, but they do. And we will start seeing this. So indictments, start looking for arrests to come in right around the holiday, in no, middle of November, into Thanksgiving and into Christmas and into New Year. And that'll mess with you, believe me. Go to, go to jail without a Pasco and get out a jail card for the holidays. So I'm just going to say this. I believe after looking over everything, meditating over everything, reading, going forward, my darlings, Brian, in my opinion, Brian Higgins is your key witness. He is the key. He is the key. Because you know what? He's not blood. He's not related. He's not blood. He was an outsider too. And I have to say this. I shudder to think what would have happened if Karen would have gone into that party that night too. There's a lot of what ifs. Let's take out one more tarot because, well, we can't. All right, here we are. This is Higgins and this is the Five of Cups. And look at look at the stance of that figure. This is a card where you regret. You regret what you have seen before you, and it's very hard to think that you still have some things going in your favor going forward. There's many bridges to cross. There's, you know, th things are still flowing. Life is still going on around you, but he is consumed. This is regret. This is sorry. This is this is not a good card 
and it's an emotionally, like I said, his life, if this is all true, supposedly, allegedly, his life will be ruined. It is already ruined if it's true. I want to thank you all for being here. Please comment, like, subscribe, share if you get a chance. I love it when you're here with me seeing crime. And you know, let me know in the comments. What do you think? What do you think? Are we on the right track with this? I got more coming out. We're going to see each other very soon. Thank you so much again for being here. You take care. Be blessed. Be watchful. Be safe. And I will see you again next time. Me and Bilbo Baggins. That little fellow that you keep hearing in the background. Yep, that's him. Talk to you very soon, darlings. Bye. <laughs>